Hi there, and welcome to episode 2 of season 2 of Linux Renaissance. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to touch uh, briefly on a fairly easy topic once again. It's um, which Linux distribution is the best. So you might think, how is that an easy topic, right? Um, stick with me for a couple of minutes and you'll find out. Let's go over a list that was compiled by... Um, a website called uh, Linux DistroWatch. So uh, Linux Mint, it says, superb collection of Minty tools developed in-house, uh, hundreds of user-friendly enhancement, inclusion of multimedia codecs, but the project does not issue security advisories. So basically, uh, Mint is something that um, new users get recommended. I'm not exactly sure why, because it doesn't exactly feel like Windows to me. Uh, but overall, a Cinnamon desktop is really nice, and um, their tools really are nice and quite user-friendly. I can understand why this distribution, you know, gets uh, recommended often. So Ubuntu, another one, uh, fairly uh, user-friendly. It says, fixed release cycle and support period, long-term support variants with five years of security updates, novice-friendly. Wealth of documentation, both official and user contributed, but lacks compatibility with Debian. Frequent major changes tend to drive some users away, and non long term support releases come with only nine months of security uh, support. So, uh, Ubuntu is actually something that I personally uh, usually rec recommend to people because Ubuntu kind of placed itself over the years as a de facto. Linux distribution for many people like uh, developers and plain users. Maybe not for advanced users who, uh, who seek uh, absolute control of their system. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but for a user who doesn't really know what they want uh, from Linux, I think Ubuntu is pretty much uh, a very good choice. Uh, Long-term support, of course, uh, is another excellent feature because, um, well, in my opinion, stable distributions uh, are a better choice, but that might be a um, very subjective topic uh, to, to discuss uh, and maybe for another, another video. Uh, basically, I prefer uh, stable distributions rather than rolling ones. Um, MX Linux, out of the box support for graphics drivers, yeah, uh, browser plugins and media codec stable core with updates, des uh, with updated desktop publications, installer, and some configuration tools look different and can take time to get used to. Well, I've never actually tried MX Linux because it doesn't attract me in, in any way and I can't I can't really put my finger on it. Um, it's not as default and as easy as Ubuntu, I think, uh, but also not very much for 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 advanced users. I, I don't know where does it fit precisely. Arch Linux, uh, excellent software management infrastructure, unparalleled cu customization and tweaking options, superb online documentations. Uh, occasionally uh, instability and risk of breakdown. So uh, it's a rolling distribution. Um, a lot of uh, advanced Linux users prefer it. You can pretty much set it up from scratch as you see fit. And basically once you get it going, it's your distribution and not necessarily Arch uh, as it is from you know, another Arch user. It, it, it's yours. So from that perspective, I think uh, it's a really good one. Uh, and once you get past the uh, initial I'm a noob uh, Linux attitude and I want to make this work for me, for, for me uh, I think Arch is really good for that. Gentoo. Uh, highly flexible, endlessly customizable, able to use a range of compile time configurations in its systems 
and run on many architectures. Requires a higher degree of knowledge to use, upgrading packages via source can be time consuming. Well, uh, when I first started with Linux, um, Gento wasn't uh, that far behind, uh, and I have used it back then. Basically, it promised to give you a little bit of edge in terms of performance because everything is, you know, compiled for your particular hardware and uh, I have personally not felt any of this um, advantage that compiling from source gives you uh, except the disadvantage that comes with it of course you need to compile everything so you know when you're in the middle of working on something and you realize that you're missing I don't know lib SSL uh, geo text editor uh, whichever little piece of operating system that you might need at that point uh, Gento would pull it very fast and then you would need to uh, and then it would you know auto compile and some of these packages can take a while to 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 you know compile I, I don't know if you if you decide to test another um, uh, desktop environment and you're maybe uh, tired of GNOME and now you want to s try KDE Plasma uh, it will take a long time to compile all that so you can mitigate that if you have another server uh, or another computer that uh, will help you with the compilation because in, in the um, uh, in the configuration files you can set another machine or m another multiple machines to be your uh, compile helpers if you will so the compilation will be much faster but generally um, I can't be sure who that distribution is really for but that's just my opinion um, Slackware considered highly stable clean and largely bug free strong adherence to Unix principles but limited number of officially supported applications conservative in terms of base package selection complex upgrade procedure well um, Slackware is, I believe, the oldest living distribution uh, of Linux, right? And uh, the fact that it's uh, uh, considered highly stable, I think it's uh, one of, uh, how to put it, uh, it, it, it's one of mine candidates for, for use. I am not a Slackware user, but if I would switch distributions, uh, Slackware, Slackware is usually on my list to um, consider, let's put it that way. I did use Manjaro and Arch a little bit, but uh, um, and, and some other rolling distributions, but generally uh, I prefer to set up things the way I like, and I prefer to receive security updates uh, and no particular updates to the core of my system right so basically desktop application like firefox and such stuff i, I can pull that from i don't know flat pack or snap but um, the core of the operating system i prefer to remain stable for a while and when i'm ready to upgrade i will do that so thumbs up for slackware for me debian uh, very stable, remarkable quality control includes over 30,000 software packages, supports uh, more processor architectures than any other Linux distribution, but conservative and due to its support for uh, many uh, processor architectures, never newer technologies are not always included. Slow release cycle every two plus years. Well, uh, currently Debian is uh, my distribution of choice uh, but that might be due to the fact that Debian was my first distribution of choice I have the most experience with apt packaging system um, so I tend to gravitate towards uh, testing distributions that are based on Debian or maybe Ubuntu but the fact that it's community driven which is a topic for another, another video and one of the most stable ones uh, it, it basically ticks all my boxes and that's where i'm at right now fedora highly innovative outstanding security features large number of supported packages 
strict adherence to the free software philosophy, availability of live spins featuring many popular desktop environments, but uh, priorities of Fedora tend to lean uh, towards uh, enterprise features rather than desktop usability. I did try uh, Fedora, as you can uh, check in my season one videos. It didn't last particularly too long. I think I used it for like a half a year. Uh, maybe some of you will say, okay, that's a lot of uh, time to use one distribution, but uh, the fact that I moved on uh, tells me that I did not really find myself in in how Fedora functions. Uh, and it's, it's none of these uh, mentioned pros and cons from, from DistroWatch, actually. I mean, they say uh, how uh, it's strict... Uh, adherence to the free software philosophy. What, what does that even mean? If you ask maybe Richard Stallman uh, if Fedora is uh, strict to uh, free software philo philosophy, I'm sure he will say uh, it's actually not. Uh, so th th that bit remains a bit questionable, uh, but out of the box it does work really well. It just, um, the, the I don't know, the, the all red hat feel might not fit me uh, very well. Um, stick stick with me a few more minutes and I'll explain something else. Um, OpenSUSE, a comprehensive and intuitive configuration tool, large repository of software packages, excellent website infrastructure and printed documentation. Uh, BTRFS uh, with boot environments by default. Um, Resource-heavy desktop setup and graphical utilities are sometimes seen as bloated and slow. I have nothing to add on OpenSUSE, I have no experience with that one. Red Hat, long-term commercial support of 10 years of more stability, but lacks uh, latest Linux technologies, small software repositories and licensing restrictions. Well, if you are into business and servers and uh, I think this can go a lot deeper than I'm ready to 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 put in this video. But basically, Red Hat is really a uh, huge popular uh, distribution in many businesses, and I sincerely doubt doubt that if you are looking for an answer to which distribution should you use, that Red Hat will ever be the answer to your question. Yeah. So um, there are. A couple more uh, distributions that might be worth mentioning, like Endeavor, Manjaro, Pop, Nobara, Kitty, Neon, and I'm sure that you will stumble uh, on a lot uh, more of these. But uh, which one is actually the best one? So if you are a new Linux user and you are wondering this question, uh, you should ask the person who 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 has uh, you know experience with Linux, and you should tell them what do you personally expect from Linux. Uh, this might help to you know shape the answer better to fit your own needs. But if you don't give them any input, uh, basically you're going to get an answer that fits the person who you are asking. So if you ask me you might uh, get the answer that, you know, Debian is the best because I personally use it and, of course, it's the best. Uh, but the, the reason why I actually uh, recommend Ubuntu is because many people don't know what they want. And once they start understanding what they expect from Linux, uh, basically that's the point in time where we can actually discuss what's the um, better choice for you. But basically, I think any popular Linux distribution is a very good answer. And um, I think that would be kind of all from me on this video. Let me know what is your personal uh, Linux distribution of choice at the moment, and maybe why. I would love to read uh, your reasons for that, and maybe you will get me to try one of yours uh, personal uh, favorites and thank you for watching the episode 2 uh, of the season 2 of Linux Renaissance.
Oh, 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 oh,